the last time on Pete and his bus. This time on Pete and his bus, I try to finish the never ending paint job. I also look at some really cool things for sale and I do a bit of housekeeping. It's been a very busy few months and these are some of the things that I've been up to. My first bus that's converted to a bar has been here, there and everywhere and at one point it was even turned into a TV studio and we also had a special guest and she thought her dad's bus was excellent. The other thing I also did was I went and saw some proper old cars drive from London to Brighton for the veteran run. Now this event always really impresses me because a lot of these cars don't even make it in the allotted time. You're trying to take something that was built in 1904 or before all the way from London to Brighton. And anyway, the weather played along and it was a superb day out. The other thing that's happened is that I got an email and certain items were offered to me for sale. Now, I'm not talking about discount sausages in M&S or cheap shoes at Clark's. I'm talking about some items that are right up my street. So I went and had a look and this is what I found. Welcome to West Ham Bus Garage on a very cloudy day. So what are the items that have been offered for sale to me? Well, the clue is in the title of this channel and they are not Pete's. For those of you that have been following the show for a while will have seen episode four, and there I briefly touch on the heritage route in central London. Transport for London still had a bunch of route masters that they were using on the heritage route, Route 15, as sort of like a tourist attraction thing. Now, this was immensely popular. I, I remember seeing people queuing up to get on an old bus rather than a new bus because it's just a bit more of an experience, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me. But during 2020, when the global pandemic first hit, that contract to run those heritage buses was due for renewal. Now, with public transport being in a very strange place with no one using it, and also I get the feeling that the powers that be were actually kind of trying to get rid of those old buses because they were expensive to maintain and run, that contract was not renewed. Which is such a shame because there is nothing nicer than seeing these old beasts running through London doing exactly what they were designed to do all these years later. But sadly, that is the case. They've all been taken out of service. But the plus side is, is that the items that have been offered for sale to me are the buses they've got left. So how are London Transport going about this sale? 
Well, I got sent an email with the information on the six buses that they are selling, and they're going to be sold via silent auction. So they've given us the minimum amount they want, and we're allowed to place bids as high as we like, and the highest bid chosen by them wins the bus. So this is what they've got on offer. According to the documentation, the buses being offered for sale are 1933, 1941, 1968, 871, 324, and one more. And this was the first bus that greeted us as we walked in, and it was an extremely sorry looking RM 1280. Now you guys probably are thinking the same as me, which is how can you let such a gorgeous bus be in such a horrible state? Well, the thing is, if you're going to run Routemaster buses on a daily basis in central London, you need a vehicle for spare parts. And 1280 sadly was that. But don't be alarmed, it might look terrible. This is still a very valuable item. Look at all the spare parts that are inside it, that are on it. So someone will probably pay good money for this. And it really surprised me to find out when the reserve price on this bus was only £3,000. Don't worry though, I'm sure that 1280 will find its way back on the road at some stage. Luckily, the next bus was in a much better state and it instantly cheered me up. This is RM324. The guide price for this bus is £10,000. Now that's significantly less than some of the ones I'm gonna show you in a minute. And the reason for that is it has been deemed a non-runner and doesn't come with an MOT. There are a couple of parts that are loose, but with it. And there is also apparently a broken bolt on the chassis. But having had a good look around this bus and having consulted the expert, I can pretty much guess that Lord Barrington would probably get this bus completely running and driving in about half an hour. So therefore, I think this makes a very interesting purchase. But you know what I like most about it? Is that the body on the outside is the exact right amount of buggered up. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean. So that is two of the six buses covered. Now we were invited to walk further into the depot to see the others, but when I got there, I was in for a bit of a shock. It turns out they've got more than just the six. So it turns out that there are actually 11 buses left rather than the six that are being offered for sale. And depending on how this sale goes, they're going to release the other five at a later date. So the last four buses have been split into two different categories. Some of these are actually in really good condition, but the only ones that are for sale are the ones that have the obvious notice in the window. Two of them have a minimum bid of £20,000 each, and two of them have a minimum bid of £30,000. So what does this extra 10 grand get you? Well, it's actually mainly on the interior. The £20,000 buses have the blue eyes down interior, they have the strip lighting and the aftermarket non-slip flooring. Whereas the £30,000 bus has the proper chocolate block flooring, it has the real monquette on the seat, the cabins have been painted in the correct color and it's got the nice tungsten lighting. They've also got some snazzy look-alike original LED lights on the outside and these £30,000 buses were actually fully recommissioned less than three years ago so you are generally buying something that is slightly better. The question is which one am I gonna buy? There's so many! So do I want one of these buses? Well this is gonna sound a bit crazy but when I was standing there with all these buses in front of me, it almost felt like I was looking at replicas because a lot of the original details and character has been lost in the sort of modernization of these vehicles. And I don't really like that. But if I were to place a bid on the day, 
it would probably be for 324 that was outside. The body was the perfect amount of buggered up and also it's a bit of a project and I think you will realize by now that I like a bit of a project. So I might place a bid on a bus or I might not. Either way, if I buy another Rootmaster, you lot will be told all about it. So here comes the final big push to get it finished. As you can see, I'm rubbing the bus down with a 2000 grit disc, and after that I'm going to get the paint gun out for one more time and blast the whole thing in red, and we can put this whole painting saga behind us. Here we go! Reload paint gun! Whoa, okay, I think by now you get the idea. I have to reload my paint gun quite a lot. That's it guys, she's actually finished. My table does look like I've killed a badger on it, but I am so pleased with the results and I want to thank you all for sticking with me. one bus painted in London red for the second time around. I'll be honest, I don't really know what to do with myself because I've finished painting. I think I might just quit. Not really. 
There is still quite a lot of stuff to get on with, but we're gonna cover some of that in the next episode of Pete and His Bus. But right now, we've got a bit of time left for a bit of housekeeping. Most of you are aware that I've got two other buses in the barn. One of them is the lovely RLH, and the other one is the RF that's in the middle of being restored. Completely by coincidence, both of them have found new places to live. And we're gonna start with the RLH because that is going to the London Bus Museum. And my friend Derek here has come along to pick her up and transport her to her new home where she can be displayed to the public. So we say goodbye to the gorgeous RLH 53. Now it's not a sad occasion, it's actually a good occasion because she's going to the London Bus Museum and then all the public can appreciate her rather than just Compo and I. So we say farewell and good luck. is a slightly different story. The owner of the bus actually lives quite far away and he's been able to find storage near his premises. So that makes his life a lot easier. But transporting that bus is not quite as straightforward as the RLH because the engine is actually cracked. Now, it would probably be fine on a long journey, but they don't want to take any chances. So therefore, Derek Mansfield from GSR Recovery was enlisted to make sure this bus gets to its destination safely. And he has a really cool truck. What's wrong? 
What are you upset about? Why are the bosses leaving? It's like I've done a really smelly fart, but I promise I haven't. <laughs> Don't worry about it, little compo. We're gonna be all right. Anyway, you've still got me, so I don't understand why you're upset. Yeah, but you're a massive boss worker and I f***ing hate you! So there we are, one bus fully painted in London Red, one barn that is now virtually empty, don't worry, lots of exciting stuff coming to replace those empty spots. Uh, and one small motorbike that is still extremely upset, but guess what? I don't give a monkeys, because that bike has got a serious attitude problem. Anyway, I hope you all had a great Christmas, uh, and I wish you all the best for 2022. The eagle eye viewers of you will have noticed that the background has changed, that's correct, I have moved house, that's why it took a minute to get this video out. But speaking of the new year, in 2022, I'm going to make a real effort to bring more videos out and more content so you can all watch lots more of Pete and his bus. As per usual, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. This episode is dedicated to my amazing niece. She's only 12 years old and she actually does a lot of the filming for me. So well done, Georgie. It looks great and thank you very much for your help. Mm -hmm.